Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. So I was in the community and I came across a post where somebody was asking, uh, how do you manage version history? In the sense of, I've got users that are out in the wild somewhere and maybe they've got updates on their devices that haven't been pushed to the cloud, but I need to make a change, like maybe I need to move my table from one data source to another, or I need to add columns, rearrange things, whatever. Uh, how do I manage that sort of situation so that I don't lose the data that my users have out in the wild and I don't, we don't have errors and like, what can I do to make this easy? In this video, I'm gonna go over what I've learned in the half decade plus that I've been working with AppSheet apps and all of the sorts of scenarios I've fallen into in this exact sort of problem. Let's get to it. All right, so the post in question that I came across is called AppSheet's Achilles Heel. It's by Jordan Davis. Hello, Jordan. He says, I've used AppSheet for about two years now and have, have a few different private apps used by 30 users or less. Almost every time I upgrade an app, I get a message from a user a few days later complaining about an error. I've tried both types of upgrades, i.e. standard and new major version. However, both lead to errors. Let's say I move the source of a table, but the table in the structure doesn't change. If a user has unsynced changes and a standard upgrade is performed, this will lead to errors that they won't be aware of until they try to resync their app. Many users leave their apps open to avoid having to wait for the app to load. This means that all of their changes will end up leading to an error and the options for recovering these changes are pretty time consuming. Hmm, very true. Alternatively, if I do a major upgrade and they have an un, if they have unsynced changes, all of those changes will be lost and they won't know it. Does anyone else have these issues? Has anyone found a good workaround? Okay, so yeah, this is a very common problem and the solution is not a one and done type of thing. There's really because it's not really, we're not talking about one problem here. We're actually talking about a few separate problems, but they're all centered around this same idea. Um, so this video might get a little long. I'll put timestamps down at the bottom so that you can get to the individual answers that you're looking for. Um, but I'm gonna try and touch on each one of these individuals, individual pieces in at least a little bit of detail. Um, so, the first thing that I wanna to touch on, right, is the types of changes that you can't make, I'll say it that way, the types of changes that you can't make if you've got users that are out in the wild with updates that they have yet to upload. So this could be, you've just got people that are just, they're actively using the app right now, it's like the middle of the day or something, uh, or it could be the scenario where maybe you've got users that are going into an area where they have limited connectivity. The cell service isn't very good. Maybe they're deep in a forest or, you know, in a valley or something. They're going underground. I, who knows? Whatever's going on. Uh, disaster areas, you know, whatever the scenario is. Um, that's really kind of what AppSheet was all centered around when they, when they originated it, right? Was... Uh, most people are going to be using a mobile device and I could be in a space where I don't have really good Wi-Fi or cell coverage. So I need it all to be able to work there. But then you run into these problems here where like I'm updating the app and they're out there. So what do I do? Um, okay. So that's one of, so the, one of the things that you can't do is change the table structure, right? So that means you can't move columns around, you can't add columns, you can't remove columns. The structure needs to stay the same. Um, you also can't, um, let's see, what else? You also can't move your data source from one place to another. Like say I've got my data source into Google Sheet and then I'm gonna move it to a Google Drive or I'm gonna move it to a smart sheet or I'm gonna move it to a SQL server or something. Uh, you can't do that that breaks the app as well. Um, another one that a lot of people don't know about is um, 
a version, the major, major version number of your app. So like when you first start your app, it's number 1.000001, right? And then it starts working its way up. You can change the one to a two. Like if you're doing a huge upgrade and you wanna start counting again, you know, you can change the one to a two. That is also one of the things that you can't do if you've got people that are out in the wild. Um, I think those are the only ones. Yeah, you can't do structure changes. You can't move your data source. You can't do the version number change. I feel there's one more hanging out there. I'll add it in the comments if I can't if I can't remember it while in the video. Um, okay, so if we go back to this guy here, right? We've got um, what. Uh, if a user has any unsync changes and I do a standard sync as performed, this will lead to, okay. So, right. Another part of this, um, another part of this issue is the presence of those unsynced changes that a user has, right? So that's actually something that you can manage. Um, so what we're really talking about here is, you know, a user's working on the app, they're doing whatever, and they finally get to a final ending point and they're done, right? And trying to get your users, trying to like train the users to be like, okay, you're done, push the sync button. Like that's, you can try that. I've had a lot of clients who have tried to do that with limited success. Uh, usually what ends up happening is you've got some rather tech savvy type users. They do that and you've got some untech savvy users and they don't, they don't cause they're not thinking about it the way that a tech savvy person is. They're like, Oh, I need to make sure I get this data there. Otherwise the other people they're thinking it should just do what it's supposed to. Um, so the thing you can do with that, right? So you have the ability to force a sync. There's a little bit of code, I'll put it down in the description below, that you can use that um, anytime that you use a deep link action. So link to row, link to view, link to, not link to form, but link to row or link to view. Anytime that you use those two uh, deep link formulas, you can throw this little bit of code at the end of it and it causes the app to sync itself. What you're technically doing is, um, it, it's a little bit of code at the end that's, that tells AppSheet, go to this view and make sure that the data is updated as of, and then you feed it a timestamp. Uh, and the code is always like tomorrow's timestamp. And so it's always trying to get tomorrow's data, but since tomorrow hasn't happened yet, it always syncs. So it's always forcing a sync. So you can do that programmatically. You can throw that inside like when somebody saves the form, right? One of the very common scenarios that I'll do is you can typically identify the end of a flow of work inside the app. And so, you know, what I'll do is inside the form save event for that final little bit, I'll throw in like a, a deep link where I'm just saying, link to row in a detail view or link to a view, taking me back to like a, a menu view or some high level starting point, something, you know, uh, on that with the force sync so that when the person saves the app immediately starts pushing that data. Or maybe there's like, you've got a button that somebody pushes a complete button or a finish or a, you see what I mean? Like there's usually something that's going on inside the app where a user is, doing some kind of interaction with the app that's a final at the end of that point. You isolate that out, identify it, and then put the force sync in with that action so that the system pushes the data right away. Now, this is a really fun thing. So this starts playing on to the psychology of humans and how we've all been conditioned in our lives to wait for progress bars. If you just think about this, so we live in a day and age now where every human alive has experienced a progress bar in their life at some point. Um, and typically we've experienced these from a young age. A video game is loading, a website is loading, <laughs> fill in the blank, right? Whole bunch of stuff that's loading, right? So we 
have been conditioned all of our lives to wait for these progress bars to complete. So fun thing, when you force a sync on a user and they've got, you know, say they did like five updates and there's five things that need to go, that need to go into the cloud. When you initiate that force sync and that user, it sees the device go to like this loading screen and there's a progress bar at the bottom that says syncing one of five, the person will wait for that. We have all been conditioned all of our life to wait for that to finish. They'll sit there and probably watch it. Just go, oh, wow, okay, all right, all right. Waiting for it to go. And as soon as it's done, then they'll like walk away, put the phone down, do whatever. It's an it's interesting little phenomena of to people today, right? And so when you throw that force sync inside these little key points, uh, you're tapping into that sort of trained Pavlovian behavior that we all have, and it ensures that this sort of critical information gets to the cloud. And it really kind of eliminates a lot of that people have syncs sitting on their device that they haven't uploaded yet. Like that kind of goes away. And so a lot of your problems can be solved by solving that. You just insert a force sync in some key moment that'll make the system just kind of go. Um, okay, so the uh, another thing that's mentioned inside here, right? So almost every time that I upgrade an app, I get a message from a user a few days later complaining about an error. Okay, so one of the things, one of the challenges of being a citizen developer that I've, I've discovered is this sort of version updating an app type of scenario. Um, I've talked to individuals who have gone to traditional developer school and they've told me that part of the syllabus that they've learned is how to manage this sort of process because there is a, a, a very definite order of operations that things have to follow and if you don't follow them you run into these sorts of problems where you've got remote users and now we've got an error with them. So the thing that, that like you, the, the traditional thing that you would have learned, right? Now, full disclosure, I didn't go to like developer school or anything. I'm 100% self-taught. Citizen developer all the way, woo! Uh, the thing that they would have taught us, right? Is <clears throat> like, you have to communicate when you're making this sort of major version change to your users. Uh, we've all probably encountered it at some point where we have some kind of soft like smart sheet does it all the time where w they say this the service will be down for an hour on this day but like they tell you about that like a week ahead of time so that you're fully aware of what's going on like that's the sort of thing that you, we all would have been taught if we went to school for this uh, so it's something that we've got to learn now and quickly to avoid all these problems, right? So the, the order of operations, right, to manage this sort of thing really needs to be figure out the sort of change that you want to do. And usually when we're talking about a major change like this, typically you can like you can see this ahead of time. Like it's not like, a, oh, we've got to do it right now type of thing. Usually it's a <clears throat> well, yeah, maybe I could, maybe I could wait till the weekend to do this, or I could wait a day or two, right? Um, and so the order of operations is figure out what you want to do, right? Figure out, at least figure out that there's a major change that you got to do. That's going to like, I need to add a table, move a table, change columns, whatever. So figure out that that needs to happen and then schedule a date that you're going to do it in the future at least two days in the future right so a week is really what you should shoot for but at least two days and tell everybody like send a mass email out to everybody saying hey i've got to make some changes to the app it's structural in nature nobody can be using it while i'm doing this you've got to make sure that you have all of your stuff uploaded blah 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 like, you know what i mean kind of give them an outline of like you got to make sure that you have all your stuff done, blah, 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 right? And so when you do that, then you're, you're avoiding that sort of problem where you've got a user that's unaware that some major thing has just happened in the system, 
right? Because that's what's happening is that you're doing a major thing in the system and your users are completely unaware of it. So just kind of coordinate with them. Um, okay, one last thing I want to touch on here is down here inside the comments. Um, yeah, one min manager made a really good, really good suggestion. This is actually something that I, I think I got this from him in the, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, one of the things that you can do is um, insert temporary columns. Uh, this is a thing that I do all the time now. Uh, <laughs> and it's actually a part of the standard starting template that I do that I that I've created for my patreon supporters where um, it, Yeah, so anytime that you add a table you just add in some extra columns that allow you the space right it gives you the space that you need in order to affect any of these little changes that you might need. Now this doesn't, this doesn't address, you know, I'm adding a table, I'm removing a table, I'm moving a table from one data source to another. It doesn't address that. Those sorts of things, like you've got to make sure you communicate with your users and have like a downtime, that has to happen. But if it's just, I want to add like a column into the mix, then this sort of adding temporary columns to your tables is a fantastic fix because the the structure technically doesn't change right like i didn't add a column i just renamed a column and renaming a column doesn't break the system because it's all technically based on the structure so this sort of solution right here is a fantastic thing that you can do and like i said i actually do it in every single one of my apps that I build now, every table has at least one temporary column like thrown at the end. I usually do five because at some point you are going to run into the, the scenario where it would be nice to be able to be able to hot fix by hot fix a problem by throwing a new column into the table, but you've got users out in the wild, so you can't do that. Well, if you do this sort of preventative thing ahead of time, right? <coughs> now you've got one or five, you know, you got X number of just random columns that are just extra inside your table. There you go, take over the column. Um, perfect thing, yeah, perfect, real good solution for that. Um, but yeah, this sort of thing about managing versions and doing uh, and, and avoiding all of the, the pitfalls that you can fall into with this sort of managing these versions. Yeah, it's a, it's a heavy topic. I'm sure I have missed something or a couple of things. So if you have any questions about how to do this or if I've missed something, point it out to me. I'll make a part two video for this. Uh, yeah. Let me know if you have any other questions about this and I'll do my best to fill it in. Thanks for watching everybody. See you in the community.